In my experiments to find ways to get the radiator to react to external modulation sources, I've been playing with various warps on the shapes. I found something I did not expect, and face it, unexpected results is why we bought these things. If you go into Color, turn on Mod, and select Source Color, you can see that some shapes have their color built in. Oh, there's one. The five line shape, for example, is a rainbow. And if you scroll down a lot farther, you'll find other shapes that have defined color, and some even have animations built into the shape. Way down the list after Quackers the Duck is random triangles with this gorgeous complex color scheme. So, I turned on the low-pass warp. I noticed that if the low-pass warp is turned way down, the higher frequency components are filtered out, and all that remains is the movement of the triangles. Not very exciting, so let's give it some Z-rotation over in the clone module and crank it up. I want to get it to 150 hertz, and this is going to take forever. Earlier, I made a preset saving only the clone module with Z rotation at exactly 150 hertz to save some time. Now, with the filter dot spinning, I get a circle with a randomly changing size. Here's me turning off the assigned colors. And I'll go into LFO1 to make it a sine wave and crank its speed to close to our spin speed, and the colors settle down. Now here's where the fun really begins. Let's add shape B and tweak its speed. At 150 hertz, we're getting a nice cycloid that's always randomly changing. But let's keep cranking up to about 450. Of course, it's always smart to save what you're doing. So we'll save this one in slot 302. This reveals a bug you should know about. Now, recalling the preset we just saved, the shape has been reset to a circle and the filter warp is gone, as shown by the parameters for shape A. No worries, we can dial over to random triangles. And then change the warp to low pass and turn up the cutoff, and we're back to where we were. Now we have a constantly changing random pattern, and it's fun to see what different shapes in B look like. Below about 14% warp, this acts like a slew limiter until we filter all of it out.
Let's make LFO one a square wave to simplify the colors. Tuning shape A changes the speed of the randomly sized circles that drive the pattern, so you can dial in a speed that matches whatever music you're listening to. I use this coma commander all the time to change parameters. Here it is changing shape B's speed routed through LFO2. Now, Here's a preset that lets me kind of crossfade between shape A and shape B using a high pass warp on A and a low pass warp on B. The high pass warp acts like a volume control on shape A, fading it out at the same time a low pass warp on shape B fades it in. Voila! Crossfade. I love the Coma Commander for extremely fine control over parameters, much finer than twisting controls. So that's it. A weird shape phenomenon, a bug, and another useful way to use warps. Alrighty then, we're done. Here's a circle.